So yeah, so we actually have a new player for us. It's uh, Thomas from uh, the band Mother Ghost, who did the uh, theme song for our show Two Past Midnight. Thomas, you want to say hi? Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm very excited and uh, very bad at this. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, you're probably going to be better at this than you were at Starfinder, at least because the rules are less. Oh, there's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, I'll try and keep up. I, I'm sure I won't need as much help as Starfinder, but no, still no. some. But yeah, Thomas was actually in my uh, home game that I ran for. Oh, fuck, what was that? Like five years, four or five years of, of the Starfinder campaign. With like a, that was a while. The one that Chris was into, but it had a uh, it had a break, a hiatus in the middle of it because um the pandemic. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, but but uh yeah, so so Thomas will be playing Cyborg with us for the next few weeks, and uh, yeah, there we go. That's it. <laughs> yeah, excited. Yeah, have any uh. Anything you want to share with anybody, Thomas, before we get to killing your character? Um, yeah, by Festivus rules, I have a lot of it. I have a lot of problems with all of you, and you're all going to hear about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I'm here. I'm here to be chill like I usually am. Uh, I'm sure Chris knows all about that. I don't know what you're talking about. And uh, cause havoc. <laughs> be be extremely cal- calm sonically, uh, but cause havoc in in the game. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> Very calm chaos. If there, if yeah. if uh, if Thomas had like a himself had a cyberpunk name, I think it would be calm chaos. Oh yeah, it would be yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into this. guys go around and kind of talk about like um like one at a time we'll start with uh uh brian chris kyle then thomas and just talk about like what your character basically is based on those those role things and what it means to you and you guys can kind of like hash out how they know each other and what like why they're working together yeah yep so brian what is, what is up with your robo mode punk all right, my my Robo Mode Punk is named D Hole. He is uh, got an elaborate hairstyle. Kind of looks like uh, the uh, old guy from Prodigy. You know what I mean? Like two <laughs> separate mohawks with a lot of spikes, multicolored. Uh, he is a chain smoker. He is geeking out over interactive Hollow Ink. So he's kind of a bit of a. Uh, covered in tattoos i'm guessing and i desire safety for my loved ones i owe eleven thousand to a debt buying corporation all guns and no scruples so basically i owe a bunch of money to uh guns that i bought trying to make sure i can protect my loved ones in this weird dystopian future Chris, my character's name is Kick. wonder if I should come up with a voice for him. It's weird, though. He sounds just like me, so... He's a slicer punk, whatever that means. I think he's just a, a punk. Agility is minus one. Knowledge is minus two, so he's dumb, too. Hmm. Broken nose. Ah, it's weird, though. It all sounds like he's like a wannabe tough guy. That's what it is. Okay. He's a scrawny dude, broken nose... He always has a it says heavy snuff user, so he's always got a dip in because he thinks it makes him look cool and tough. Uh, he loves sports. That's all he likes to talk about. Um, he acts like he was like a really good athlete, but he always sucked. It's like he's a complete poser. 
Um, he likes chaos. He just wants to watch the world burn. He owes 14000 to a crime syndicate uh, from betting on sports because he thinks he knows everything about sports, like he's an expert, but really he's clearly not. And he has his robo robo dog um, named Havoc because he thinks that's cool because he likes mayhem. Yeah, he's really just a, a complete walking fraud. Every everything he has is a front. So talks tough, isn't tough. That's kick. All right, it looks like I am Fort, a new flesh burned hacker. I've got mirrored eyes, and I'm always carrying around a paperback. Uh, my current latest obsession is style hopping, so I guess I'm into the fashion world of this as well. I have a desire to kill. Recently on a deep dive of the cyber cosmos, I found a terrible truth. Stealth carrier drones are offloading large amounts of something that I'm not aware of in the GO on certain rainy nights currently have a 28,000 credit debt to a fixer who has cops <laughs> on their payroll. As a burned hacker, I'm one of the sharpest deckers in Psy. No one can use tech or warp the world with an app like I could. But man, I have no clue what went wrong. I messed up or <sighs> maybe I was tricked. I got sloppy or something. <sighs> I ran into a terrible truth and now uh, I'm burned. No collective, no fall blacks, no options, nothing. So it sounds like I'm a smart guy who got caught up in a bunch of stuff, found a bunch of information that I wasn't supposed to find, and now I found myself on the outs of all the things I thought were my friends. Uh, yeah, my guy's name is M. Uh, or Emni. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Let's go with Emni. Um, a necro pop punk um so let's say like very goth like uh i like this detail uh mirror eyes rapid blinking <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so i guess i have reflective eyes and i'm constantly blinking uh can't stop talking about ammonium chloride candy um so, yeah, I guess my guy's just insane. Uh, I seek justice. And uh, I owe 4000 to a fixer with cops on their payroll. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just a really crazy goth uh, that that is obsessed with justice. If I see something wrong, I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be, like, legal justice either, you know yeah, what I mean? Just like, uh, yeah, just like someone gets shoved in public, and and I gotta step up. Right, right. <laughs> Knee. <laughs> so, someone uh, gave back the wrong amount of change at the, uh, at the local <laughs> <laughs> video store, and, and that's just not okay with me. <laughs> Me. Uh, yeah. So Kyle had mentioned something about the the geo, and it's actually it's the it's a G zero is what it is, or uh, what it is is there was some sort of cataclysm, uh, like a asteroid or a meteor, or something along those lines, and it's the whole. If you guys look at the map, there's that section in the middle of like the city, because this is a map of the city, is what mm -hmm. this is. This is the city of Psy and all the different neighborhoods. The G zero or geo or whatever, um, is yeah, basically a wasteland in the middle. And like people will venture into it for things sometimes, but for the most part, it's full of like hellish nightmarish outside of this world type shit. Right. So it's kind of, uh, not, not a good place. Not a, not a, not a nice place to visit. Uh, this is where the rock fell, where the bombs dropped, a post-apocalyptic quagmire kept in the quarantine by a massive wall monitored by auto turrets and armed drones. Entering the sector without proper protection is still a death sentence. Wow. If the murderous nano freaks, pockets of nerve gas or radioactive space dust don't kill you, then whatever the hell makes that noise at night will. Most of the area is waterlogged uh, scrap and warped steel. 
but some of the oldest medieval parts of the Psy still stand. Uh, scrap heads looking for antique junk, smugglers running goods, cultists seeking the profane truth, and scientists looking for a way to profiteer from the fallout are the only beings you'll meet here. The only humans, that is. So, yeah, generally it's not a great place to go. But that's what that is in the center of the map. All right, so there's this really cool line here, or this really cool couple paragraphs on page three that I'm going to read because it's cool and it kind of sets this, the tone for the game. So it's the world is ending again and again and again and again and again. Constantly in flux, shifting, distorting, always reborn as something worse. Destruction by ecological catastrophes. The fallout of history's belligerence by modern man-made miseries or the blood spilled by the reckless machines of capitalist supremacy. Mankind's greatest ability truly is to destroy itself in creative ways. Designer demise, consumer customized death, endlessly on repeat. Poisonous space rocks, nuclear weapons, cyclical revolutions, warring nations, warring corporations, warring neighbors, pandemics, tsunamis, volcanoes. In between it all, direct person machine interfaces. Tactical neural implants and bacteria form outer space hijacking intracellular nanobiotics, and the sky is full of ads. Everyone is interfaced, injected, infected, infested with something. Everyone wants something from everyone else. Everyone is a liar and a cheat. Everyone wants more creds. Welcome to the year 20X3. Welcome to the city of Psy. So, where we start is actually going to be in the ports, which is the neighborhood just north of uh, G0. And the ports district is... Um, Basically, there's there's no escape from the city, even the, the three ways out, air, sea, and space. The ports offer the illusion of escape from within a labyrinth of universe of steel, concrete, and abandoned warehouses. A black market of imports and what's left of the rest of the world fall from the prying cameras of the sea corpse. So long as the bribes keep flowing, drugs, guns, clubs, and fun, this is the entertainment district of size, true citizens. Corpse, mobs... VIP celebs and street gangs vie for dominance, their gunfights drowned out only by the cacophonous hedonism on display. So this is kind of like the party district, essentially. So where we open is with your four characters sitting in this nightclub. We can hear some sort of cyberpunk type, techno-y, industrial type music going off. What would you that sound see? like? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but you can see all these people dancing. Uh, it's like, and you hear the music going off, and you guys are sitting at a table off to the side because you're supposed to meet a contact, right? At this club. And so like, the music's blaring, people are dancing everywhere. And then all of a sudden it goes, it's interrupted. And the message displays on all of your either, you know, cybernetic eyes or your you know sunglasses or whatever you're wearing that usually you can jack in with to the net and um this message displays with a voice that says your free trial of this nightclub has expired please deposit 1000 credits to continue and you look around and it's silent there's no more music but you can still see everybody else dancing so you're in a club, but just the only way to actually experience the actual music of the club is to pay for it. You do see a news article flash across the screen, and uh, it reads that uh, there's a VIP duo, Alexel C, that uh, had recently died in an explosion of their penthouse. Um Th these two guys are, uh, they're mostly famous for allowing paying fans to jockey their drug fueled nights of excess in this district, the ports. Uh, and their, their tour ended with a bizarre DIY bombing in the North Central flat, uh, their flat in North Central. And, uh, the weirdest part that they kind of point out is that the news reporter says that their entire fortune is to be split between their drug dealer, their plastic surgeon, and some man named Taffy Wass, which is weird because you guys actually know a guy named Taffy Wass. Like, that's a contact of yours, someone you guys have, like, done work for before. 
But um, as you're sitting there, and this news article kind of goes across, they uh, you see another man walk into the club, and he uh, appears to be some sort of gang member of another gang than yours. You know, it's not someone that you guys are like directly associated with, but based upon the clothing that he's wearing, you're you can kind of you know piece out that he that he's definitely uh, a member of some other group, right? And uh, he, he kind of looks around, and he sees the four of you sitting there. And he walks up, and he says, uh, You must be the four I'm looking for. I'm uh, Mr. Pulse sent me. And you guys kind of recognize that name as a, uh, a famous hacker, right? Like a big name in the hacking community. Kind of a recluse. No one really, like, sees him or knows who he is. You know what I mean? Like no one really knows his face, but they know the name. He has a uh, he has a job for you. Can I sit? Yeah, take a seat. What what kind of job you got? There's a game on tonight that I need to catch. I got money on it. Yeah, well, this um, he kind of looks around, like looks over his shoulder. This um, this job pays pretty well. It pays uh, five thousand credits. It's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward if you're interested. Is that total or a piece? A piece. Hmm. And you, you, you said it's from Paul, Pulse? The Pulse? The Pulse. That's right. That's right. Oh, the Pulse. Okay. Shh. Go quiet, does, quiet, quieter. How does he know about us? He does his research. First name Pulse, last name Pulse? Um, he first does. name, last name. It's Pulse. I mean, if you haven't heard of him, what are you doing? It, um, I mean, he does his research, you know, when he, I mean, I've never even met him, so I, I don't know. He, I, I got a message to meet four people here to relay this job. That's all I know. What do you talk about? How's he heard of us? We're badasses, man. Well, I could use the money. All right. So the job's in the Oak Isles. And as soon as he says that, you know that the Oak Isles is kind of like the super rich area of town, right? Like it's crossed on the other side of North Central from where you guys are and all the way down there on the bottom left, the southwest, I guess. You see an area called Oak Isles. Yep, right there. Like I said, it's a super rich side of town. So, so it's a, it's kind of a, um, you know, it's a really rich neighborhood, so um, basically, there's a uh, a man who has a uh, a well, I don't know if we want to call it a hideout, but more so a place where he would store stuff. And his name is uh, Thirst or Batty, right? And uh, he has a uh, in his little area that he has underground. There's a uh, brain box. And uh, Pulse wants you to retrieve that brain box. You guys know that what a brain box is, is basically like a black box for your consciousness. Not yours, but somebody's. It's basically a way of like saving your consciousness so that if something happens to your body, you can be brought back. Whose brain box has he got? I don't know. Didn't tell me. Didn't tell me whose brain box it was. Just that there is a brain box. Now, this hideout, this uh, lair is in a, uh, it's in the sewer, right? It's in a retrofitted section of the sewer underneath Oak Isles. So, uh, also, we have um, identification for you guys, a cover story, if you will, as uh, public works, so that you can get down there and get underneath without raising suspicion because of the neighborhood you're in. No one's going to think twice about guys in jumpsuits, you know? They're just going to think that you guys are there to fix their shit, right? So they're not even going to think twice about it. You guys are going to just disappear among all those rich assholes, basically. They won't even see us. They'll look through us. Exactly. And uh, you guys get a message that comes through. It's basically a rough schematic of what you'll need to do to get into there. And let me move you over to that map. If you zoom out, you'll be able to see more of it. 
basically what you're going to need to do is go along. And when I say sewer, it's really, it should be pretty clean down there because it's not, it hasn't really been used for drainage at all. But um, you're going to want to head east until you get the, to the end and turn up to the north. And you're going to want to cut in and go through because there's a security hub that you're going to want to turn off the security system there first before going in further. Then make your way over through the guy's toy room. I don't know what that means. This is just what Pulse told me. You got to get through his toy room and the brain boxes in the next room. And then the quickest way out is going to be straight south. I also have this in your journals, by the way, as a handout. So let me make it so you guys can see it. Boop, boop. Up to everyone. Nice. So if you look in handouts, you'll see that same schematic so that you can look at it later. But this is the basic plan. So I have, um, I don't have the credentials and the suits here, but we have a drop point where you guys can pick that stuff up over in North Central. Let's say we do this and we get this brain box. Are we giving it to Pulse ourselves? No, I don't, I don't believe so. He said that there's uh, instructions in the uh, with the drop of the the cover and the suits that you guys are going to need. Uh, there's instructions on what to do after that. But I imagine from the way he works, he'll probably just contact you afterwards, message you in some way, and tell you where to leave said brain box. We allowed to take anything else while we're there? He doesn't care about anything else while you're there. I guess if you find something else, it's all yours. I mean, there's a room called the toy room. Maybe we can steal his toys. As I said, the only thing he only thing Pulse cares about is that brain box. So anything else? I assume it's fair game. Might be a good opportunity to uh kill a few rich people too. Well, as I said, this is in the sewer, so it's not like there's... It should be pretty empty. There shouldn't be a lot, you know. There, no one should be hanging out around there, but just in case. You know. Sounds a little too easy. Right, but but who in their right freaking mind has a toy room in the sewer? These are probably a bunch of scuzzy dildos is what we're after. <laughs> probably. We're going to have to wade through a room full of scuzzy dildos to get this brain box. Scuzzy dildos? Yeah, that's what you find in a toy room in a sewer, mate. Naturally, you want to keep your dildos in the sewer. That's what we all do. <laughs> and he kind of looks over his shoulder. He's like, all right, I, I got to go. Um, here. And he, like, uh, basically hands you guys, like, a, a, a data stick. The location's on here. I, I got to go. And he, like, stands up and starts to leave. No money up front? I, not that I know of. I, I did everything I was told to. Hmm. All right, well, I'm not doing anything else, so you guys up for it? Hell yeah. You know we all need the money. The money's great, but, I mean, Pulse is a legend. If I can get in his good graces, could be some smooth sailing. Look, I ain't got enough money to buy my grandmother another freaking pack of smokes, so I can't even continue the song in this freaking club, so... I'm all in. Yeah, I'm pretty bored myself, so let's do it. Sounds like a walk in the park. Shouldn't be a problem, hopefully. (laughs) I'm in. All right, so you guys head to the drop location in North Central? Uh, Assuming that we are already equipped, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you guys can stop and get equipped however you want to get equipped. Yeah. And our dogs will be pretty useful in the sewer, too. Yeah, bring the dog. I'll wear my extra goth uh, clothing. <laughs> I, got a, I got a skull mask that really makes my mirrored eyes shine. My man's on to something, though. Why is there a freaking apartment and toy room in the sewer in the rich part of town? Right, that's what I was trying to say. That's all sixes and sevens, man. You want to roll some dice? I bet you I can get a six or a seven to come up in three rolls. You know me. I'll gamble on anything. Oh, I know you would, mate. You, you'd gamble at throwing a rock at a tree. 
I bet you I hit it before you do. So did we get where we got to get these uh, worker digs from? Um, yeah, to go there, you'd pretty much have to like um, uh, take public transportation to get over there. Do you guys want to start headed that way? Yeah. Looks like the boys are taking the bus. And we're going to take the stupid tram bus thing. I hate being broke. Yeah, that's pretty much what your option is, yeah. Public transportation. Sorry, I'm making pawns for you guys while you guys are traveling. So you guys are traveling across on the um, the the subway, basically. The the elevated train that they have here in Psy. And uh, as you go by, you, you can see, like, the sky is just, like, freaking filled with ads, right? Like, I don't know if you guys have, like, looked in the book at all, but as you're going through um, the central, like, uh, business area, basically, it's just everywhere you look, there's there's ads. And if you guys could afford it, um, you guys would be able to have ad blockers, but you aren't quite able to afford something like that right now. Wasn't there a movie that had that like everywhere they looked there would be ads? Probably. Yeah, there's been several. Minority Report. Um, one of the Blade Runners kind of looked like that. I think Didn't that um, Ready Player One movie have that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, probably. Well, we're sitting on our transportation. I uh, kind of sit a little bit in the corner. I've got my uh, little robot dog. It's bright red with kind of white flashings down the middle. Name Zero. Mm-hmm. I just kind of put my feet on him, pull my little book that I always carry around in my back pocket out, and just kind of sit down and read. Kind of take it all in. I'm uh, I'm doing those uh, cyber dances. That the, that the cyber goths do under the bridges. <laughs> okay. I've got my dog like a mean mug and all the people on the tram. Like growling at him. Yeah, you better keep away from us. Yeah, nothing scarier than a guy reading a book, some weirdo dancing in the middle of a bus and a guy <laughs> with a mean dog. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and, and yeah, and as you guys look around the, look around the bus, like it, I mean, you're not the only ones there that look like this. You know what I mean? Like everybody's, everyone's a little weird. Everyone's a little weird and kind of rough. Um, but you're going through the like uh, business district, which at this time of day is is you know pretty quiet for the most part. You know, you know people are kind of passing through here, and uh, you get to the stop where your stuff's supposed to be and you find a um a antique uh, uh mailbox like the big blue mailbox where people would drop packages but like it's all dented up and banged up and the paint's all chipped but for some reason it's still just sitting here you know and that seems to be where your uh your stuff's been dropped off for you to pick up and you kind of Notice that the door on the back of it's kind of part way open, and you look inside and you can see just like a duffel bag in there. Looks like it's here, just like they said it would be. Let's get dressed. Yeah. Check the ID badges, make sure they're correct, legit. Pass them around to everybody. Yet yeah, all the ID badges have names on them like Bill, Tom, Rick, Steve. And that's it. You know, just like pretty straightforward names. Here, Blinky, and I throw uh, Steve to him. Anybody want Tom? (laughs) (laughs) I want Bill. I really feel like D-Hole is a right proper name. And I don't see why I couldn't just have a badge with my name on it. Do you have a badge with your name on it? Uh, Nope, none of them said D-Hole. Nope. Then you're fucking Bill. <laughs> I don't want to be fucking Bill. <laughs> fucking wanker. 
then you can head back to the club and listen to nothing with none of your money. All right, all right. Let's just get freaking dressed before we get all pissy with each other, all right? Bill it is. You're complaining because you don't have a custom badge with your name on it. I just think D-Hole's a right proper name. I was just stating facts. How dare they think otherwise? Not sitting here trying to split hairs with you. You just wanted to get all hostile for no freaking reason. Uh, D-Hole is a perfect name for you. <laughs> I grabbed the fourth name. I can't remember what it is. And put it on. Start getting ready. Uh, I don't remember what all the names were either. <laughs> Bill, Tom, Steve, and something. Apparently I got Tom. It was Rick. <laughs> Hey, D-Hole, you're... Are you Rick? Oh, no, you're Bill. You're Bill. I'm Tom. All right, so you guys get dressed and get back on the public transportation. As you start getting closer to the uh, the Oak Isles, also, you know, like, referred to as the Hills. Um, yeah, so as you get closer to there, you um, you start seeing, like, the wall that I kind of had mentioned before because it's kind of like walled off from the rest of the city and it's kind of like it's kind of um like you're you're supposed to only certain people have access to even be able to get into this you know area of the city um as you guys get uh closer the the bus pulls up and stops and um everyone has to get off so that you can go through the security checkpoint, essentially. Try not to act too much like a psycho or a hidden the rich part. Just act like we belong here. They're not even going to notice us. We're peons. Trying so hard not to blink. Just workers. <laughs> As you guys are walking towards the, the walled part of the, uh, the... The wall between you and this rich neighborhood, over top of the wall, you can see these, like what appear to be really ancient buildings just kind of like looming over top of this wall. The architecture seems real strange and kind of out of place compared to the rest of the city. Like it seems not of this time. It seems very anachronistic. And um, you guys have heard of this building before. Maybe you hadn't seen it before now. But it's one of those buildings that it's just here and no one really knows what it's for. Or who built it or why you know it's it's a recent construction that's what everybody knows was it was built pretty recently but nobody really knows who built it or why they built it it's just there and it just seems completely out of place with the in the skyline and you know in the time that you're in and uh, as you get closer to the wall uh, the gate leading into the neighborhood um, there's little sensors that you can like swipe the badges to uh, to get in. You get up there. Which one of you goes first? I'll go. All right. So Emney walks up and swipes a badge. Is it bloop bloop? And like this little light goes from yellow to green, so that they can go in. Yes, I was expecting that. Who's next? I'll head through next. All right. Uh, Fort, right? Yep. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so Fort, you walk up, same thing. Bloop, bloop. Goes from yellow to green. So far, so good. Go ahead, D-hole. I'll go last, make sure we're, we're safe. All right. I guess I'll go next. All right, so D-hole swipes the badge and goes, bloop, bloop. And for a second there, it like flashes back to red and then to green. It was old. All right. All right, kick. Yep, we're going to go through me and my dog, Havoc. All right, you scan it, and it goes green, but then it flashes to red. And eh, 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 eh. Well, that's not good. He, he backs out and then uh, goes through by himself, and then has the dog come through behind him, like thinking maybe the dog set it off. All right, so yeah, so you go to, you, you have the dog step back and you go to swipe it again and it goes like green, red, green, green, red, green, yellow, green, red, red, green, yellow, red. It goes back to yellow. 
just quickly walk through. Okay. Like we belong. Okay. All right, so you're walking through. As you walk through, it goes, and clicks over to green. Uh, phew. You guys have any issues with yours? No issues at all? Uh, no, but we should keep on walking. Get as far away from, from here as possible for now. All right, so you guys know that the um, the entrance into where you're supposed to get to is like a uh, a maintenance hatch, basically like a like a manhole. Um, it's a few blocks in, and uh, you look around and you see people in uh, much nicer clothes than you generally see. Uh, they definitely seem much more well off, and yeah, they're kind of just walking by you like you don't exist, you know, for the most part. Like they're just not even really looking at you. I say we make a beeline to our destination. Okay. So you guys go a couple blocks and you get to the uh, the maintenance hatch. Uh, well, I mean the manhole so that you can crawl down in there and uh, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> Take a look around make sure nobody's watching. Start heading down. Yeah, so you look around and get again, man. People are just like fucking walking by. Like they see you in these jumpsuits with like your clipboards and they're just like, whatever, you know, they don't even, don't even notice you. You're the help. One thing you can always expect from the rich. If your stations are just a little bit lower, you might as well not even exist over here. You probably could have came through here. Guns blazing. I don't think they'd have batted an eye at us. Uh, couldn't be more clear we don't belong here. Well, brother, our station's a hell of a lot lower than these people. <laughs> so you start to head down, and it's uh, basically just like a ladder going down. Yeah, you crawl down this ladder, and you end up in what would be the sewer. Except for, like I said, it's it's pretty freaking clean, you know? And, like, you're really surprised... By by how clean it is, actually. I have quite a bit of difficulty getting the cyber dog down the ladder and trying to figure out how to do that. I mean, it's a small cyber dog, it said, didn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> yes. It's, oh, mine said small. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, yeah, small. So, yeah. Yeah, I should be on the right map of the sewer now. Bloop, bloop. Right. So... I know that, like, all these uh, wankers around this part believe that the crap doesn't stink, but it really kind of freaks me out that the crap doesn't stink. Literally, there's... <laughs> <laughs> there's something fishy going on. Yeah, and it does not stink down here, yeah. I smell a rat, but, like, it's because I don't smell a rat. Man, these rich folks, they, they probably got air freshener attached to their ass. I mean, I really, I don't care what you attach to your ass. Shit is shit. And there's none of it down here. So either all these guys above ground are like constipated beyond belief. Or there is something going on down here where we're at right now. <laughs> You'd fit in. You're full of shit. All right, all right. Let's focus here. First thing we've got to do is find the security hub. Deactivate the security system if we're going to do this. According to the map and the schematic, we're on the f the first path in. This will be the same way we go out. All we have to do is head due east until the route ends, and we should have a northern bank from there. Keep your eyes out. I don't trust this. It's too easy. He didn't really say that we weren't allowed to get loud, right? Let's not test it. You oh, sure? Go ahead and start doing cartwheels. Is there light down here? Um, not a, a little bit. I mean, so like you can see that the hallway or not hallway. I mean, I guess it's kind of like a hallway instead of really like a sewer. Because like I said, it's really fucking clean. There's no water even down here. Like it's just dry, and it. Seems like it's actually been cleaned really well. But, um... That's probably nothing. Yeah. Right. You know, it's pretty bad when you live in these people's sewer. 
Well, what I'm asking is, like, how far out can we see? I mean, do any of us have a light source to mention? I don't think any of us mentioned that in our gear sheet, so... I mean, are we flying in the dark, or...? Yeah, you can see, like, little lights, like, along the way. Like, just, like, basically little little yellow lights, right? All right, all right. Um, every so often. And you can see that up ahead, the hallway goes up to the north and then heads to the south at kind of a T. And then um, you do see that there's a, a door about halfway between you and that T that appears to be closed. I think that door is the way we're going to take it when we leave. So let's head on down to the end. Let's do it. You lead the way, Magellan. Fort starts slowly heading that way. Alright, so you guys start heading to the east towards the T. Yeah. I do this, but I stay behind D-hole. Yeah. Like, basically, what kind of pattern? Like, what what um, marching order are you guys going in? Two by two. Well, I figured Kick, being the, the tough guy that he is, should probably be leading the way here. Is it? All right, so like this, D-hole and m in the front and Fort and Kick in the back. Sure. Yeah, we got the, we got the dogs. We'll stay in the back. Oh, dogs. Hold on. Let me get dogs for you. <laughs> All right. So what are you guys doing? Basically just going down to the T in this formation? Right. Yeah. yeah. It, but, except, yeah. Right. I want my assault rifle out. Okay. Ditto. I was going to zip you guys over there. There you go. Do the dogs have any kind of... Uh... Uh, I don't know, senses? Like, do they detect things? No, they're just robot dogs, so they can detect whatever robot robot dogs can detect. I.e. what their sensors can sense. They can find robot cats. <laughs> also robot poop. <laughs> but no, they don't have any special senses. Yeah, I meant like sensors type thing. No, just standard visual sensors. This path should head north. So as you get to the T, and uh, who's who's looking up around to the north? It looks like I got there first, so I would take the peekaboo out around the corner. All right, so you peek up to the north, and you can see to the south also. You see that to the south, it just kind of extends and keeps going, right? But to the north... See that it goes up, and you can kind of see a doorway on the um, left-hand side. There's actually like a, a another, you know, maintenance door essentially on the left, a little ways up the tunnel. All right, according to our map, it uh, looks like I got visual of the door we got to get to to get to the security area. You want to send the dogs up up forward just in case we run into anything? They can be like our uh, alarm trigger. I'm just going to keep zero with me if you're okay with that. You can do whatever you want with yours. I'm cool with waiting for the dog. Yeah, go right ahead. I'll I'll keep a watch on the six. All right, Havoc. You go up north, see if you see anything. Go about 20 yards. Yeah, so Havoc goes wandering up to the north. Doesn't seem to come across anything. Mm, just, I'm going to follow, follow the dog. Okay. If it doesn't sense anything, then we'll just stay on it. Now, as you're going up like this, like I said, it's every, you know, so many yards or so, you'll see, like, another yellow bulb that's just kind of like... Bzz, 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 just flickering. That's probably fine. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Rich guys all staying back that far? No, I'll, I'm keeping an eye on the six to the south. Okay. It's kind of creepy how quiet it is here. Yeah, so D-Hole's staying there to the south, just watching around the corner while the other three are heading north. Right. Yeah, I'm heading north. Okay. All right, going to send our robo-dog up to where we think the door is that we need to go in. Okay. And even though it's a uh, small robo-dog, he's got, like, painted fangs on it and stuff to make it look like it's menacing. Mm-hmm. Of course, of course. 
All right, so yeah, so your little robot dog gets up to the uh, gets up to the door, and it's the door shut. So move right up to where the dog is. Get the little blinky yellow light over top of it. I'm moving up, but I'm still kind of keeping my eyes peeled to the south of us. Mm-hmm. You can see from where you are that the tunnel up further to the north curves up and to the left also. But, you know, if you look at your plan, that wasn't part of your plan. So, I thought the scale was just wrong. Yeah, I mean, it does kind of curve up to the left. It just is a much larger distance from where we should be. You guys think our key cards will work on these doors? Only one way to find out. I wouldn't try his fist, seeing as how we already had problems with it. Maybe one of the other two should try this. I'll try mine. Let's do it. All right, so Emney goes up, and you're going to try scanning your card on it? Yep. All right, so you run your card through. Just please has got a little, you know, thing where you slide your card through. It's bloop, bloop, and a little green light comes up, and the door click, click opens up. Uh, do I see anything? No, I mean, it doesn't, like, open, open. I'm just saying, like, oh, like, okay. click, click, and, like, yeah. All right, let's go. If you guys are ready. When, when it when you open it, you can actually see that there's another door just past it. <laughs> there's another door. Mm-hmm. But this one doesn't appear to have, like, a locking, you know, electronic lock on it like that. Oh, okay. Um... Does it look like this, like the first door is going to automatically shut or, or is it just open? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, roll uh, knowledge. First roll of the campaign. Mm-hmm. What'd you get? That seems good, right? 19? Yeah. Um, no, it does not seem like it's a trap you between two doors type uh, situation. All right, then I'm going to open the second door. I'm going into the hallway and opening the second door. All right, so bloop, bloop, you open the second door. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll stand in the way of the other door closing, so that way in case that happens. So when you open the door, it does not make the other door close. Cool. But as you open the door, you see this fairly large round room it has a catwalk kind of around the edge of it and like in the center there's like a pool of water like a tank basically not really a tank more so just like you can see water in the center of it but not like a puddle like water with some depth to it like when you look at it Hmm. just kind of this black water yeah it's probably another same kind of yellow light in the center of this room and the weird thing is the water doesn't it doesn't really smell like like shit you know what I mean it just kind of like smells like relatively clean water but just yellow light over it bzz, 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 bzz. Uh, this isn't what we're looking for so I'm gonna leave it alone unless to the you guys south, you also see another door by the way yeah, I kind of want to go south. Seems more like the map that we were given. But it's up to the group to uh, see what they want to do. Well, I don't know about any of y'all, but this whole situation stinks something heavy Because it doesn't stink at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're uh... in a sewer that doesn't smell, and you got a giant vat of dark water... It just doesn't smell. And our map is right useless about now. I don't see no circle room on our map. I don't see much of nothing on this map that matches anything that we're doing right now. Uh, yeah, I don't want to test uh, things. We're already lucky enough to have made it this far. I'm, I'm, I want to stick to the plan. I think we should go south to the other entrance. Seems closer to what the map that we're given right I don't see no round room on our map yeah that's why I don't want to go into the round room so then what you want to go north and see where that takes us 
according to our map, the north should take us up to the apartment. But it does look like there's another entrance to the toy room, but we will, uh, we will be bypassing security. Just go in the round room and go through the other door. Come on. You want to go through the round room? Yeah. Who cares? It's just water. Uh, you afraid uh, of getting wet? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I got shiny eyes. Oh, for crying out loud. I have the same eyes you do. I just keep them open all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm more towards going north, uh, farther up north and going the alternate route. Is there another door in the round room? Yeah, you see a door to the door south. Door to the south. Oh, to the south. Yeah. Like on the south end of the room, 90 degrees from where you are. I'm still opposed to going through the round room. I push in the end of the room. (laughs) 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 Let's just fucking go somewhere. I mean, look, I'm not going to... I'll follow where you guys go, but I'd I'd much rather stick closer to the plan. What are the rest of you guys doing? Kick and D-hole. D-hole's going to stay kind of posted up at the door there, kind of still watching the, the... the six for us. Mm-hmm. It's up to kick. Kick's just looking around like not wanting to make a decision at all. Kick, get in here and go through this stupid door. Come on. You're always talking about how big and bad you are. Just go through the door. <laughs> it's a door. All right, all right, all right, all right. Come on, Havoc. All right. Yeah. Havoc's going to go first. Um, what on... Um, all right, so Kick's going in. Is it? Oh, well, you're sending Havoc all the way over. Can Havoc open the door? All right, well, hold on, hold on. Why don't you guys all roll a presence check oh, for cool, me? Oh, cool, yeah. Other than D-hole. Yeah, that's probably a cool thing. So, Kyle. Yes, sir. As Kick and Havoc start walking along towards the door, as they start getting closer, you're kind of looking around, and you hear, like, a, a splashing sound coming from the water. And you look down and you see something moving in it. 